Hey folks, as we continue looking through thermodynamics, today's video lesson is going to be about thermal expansion of materials. We're going to look at linear expansion, um, most, most in-depth. We're also going to take a little conceptual look at the area and volume expansions as well. So the big thing with thermal expansion is as heat is transferred, so again we get this heat transfer, um, that is going to lead to the kinetic energy of the particles of one object to increase, which is going to cause the temperature to rise as well. So as heat enters a material, causing it to warm up, we're going to see that object expand. And it is going to expand linearly. It could expand for an area, or the entire volume could expand as well. If you think about the ideal gas law, as the temperature of the gas increases, so too does the volume of that gas. If we think about that linearly, if, if a metal bar warms up, it is going to expand in length. And it is going to expand in width as well, right? Because we're going to get an area expansion, we're going to get a volume expansion and a linear expansion, right? That warming is going to cause those particles to vibrate at a higher rate, which means as they vibrate and as they move, the, the distance between the atoms themselves are going to increase, which is what causes the expansion in the first place. Now, if we cool something, obviously the, the same is going to go, right? So if you remove thermal energy, if you take heat out of a system, we're going to see the kinetic energy of the particles go down, thus the temperature goes down. And because those particles on average aren't going to be vibrating as fast, the space between particles is going to condense, which is going to cause the entire material to contract as well. So if we look at the bottom left diagram here, we're going to see before heating, right, they're relatively close to each other, vibrating a little bit. Once it's been heated, it's going to expand out. There's going to be more overall energy present. We're going to get that object to get bigger. Now, the other two pictures that we see here, the one in the middle, that is from a railroad track. And based on where you construct the railroad, you're going to get differences in temperatures, right? Sometimes those temperature extremes can be a lot. Sometimes the temperature extremes can be very little. So if you picture in Minnesota, for example, you need quite the range in order to, to account for the expansion and contraction of the metal throughout the calendar year when you go from temperatures in the negatives to pushing 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So what we see there is this gap. And what that gap allows is as those metals expand, it can fill that gap as that metal heats up, and then when the metal shrinks, we still have the track in contact. So notice that, there, that there's space for that bar to fill, and then as it recedes back in both directions, it's still going to stay in contact to maintain the integrity of the rail. Now the, the picture on the far right, that is an expansion joint on a bridge. As you drive over bridges and you hear that boom, 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 that's you going over these expansion joints. And again, they're going to be made of metal, just like the rail. And what we see is when it's warmer, that metal is able to expand and it's going to fill those teeth so that it, it's going to come together. And then as it cools, it's going to move away and you're going to have a little bit of a gap in the bridge. Now, what's important about this is it maintains the structural integrity of the bridge. So rather than having the asphalt constantly expand, contract, expand, contract, that's going to eventually make the asphalt crack. So by putting these expansion joints in here, it prevents that pavement from cracking, which is going to allow the bridge to continue to function. What this video is going to briefly show in approximately a two minute video is an aluminum bar expanding. Now, when we look at the expansion, it's really not that much, right? We don't get, you know, a, a, a 50 centimeter bar to double its length, right? It's not going to go from 50 to 100 centimeters. We're talking a 50 centimeter bar could maybe become 51 centimeters at the absolute most. So our length changes aren't going to be very big on a small scale. Even on a grand scale, we're going to see in a little bit, on a big scale, those expansions and contractions are actually a really small percentage of, of the overall length itself. So watch this clip here. You're going to love the voiceover in it, I promise. This is an experiment showing the effects of thermal expansion of a piece of aluminum. If you look real close here, we see the aluminum piece shown here. And over to the left is a mechanical amplifier 
which will indicate uh, the amount of expansion. As we see really close here, just a slight movement down to the bottom will cause a movement of the needle upward up towards the aluminum range. Heat is added to the aluminum sample to show this thermal expansion effect. Okay, here goes the torch. And you can see, right, I'll kind of fast forward for you. You can see that move and move and move and move and move as that heat is added to it. So what we see again, there's not a huge physical difference in the metal bar itself. Right, notice that. It's not like the metal bar grew a noticeable amount, right, expanded in length a huge amount. Rather, it's a small change, but what this device does is it amplifies that. So by pushing against the lever down here, we get a, a little lever system. So a small push here results in a big change in the other lever. So a tiny change we can actually then see because it's a really hard thing to get visually on such a small scale. But we have proof of it right here. Here's another video, right, showing the, uh, showing the road buckle here. Right, you can see it off to the corner where the road buckle due to the heat. And this driver, unfortunate, boom, right there he goes. Person with the camera's freaking out, like, oh man, did you see that guy? And there goes the car, tires probably flying everywhere. This person doesn't know how to film. Oh my goodness, look at the car over there, just, just a wreck. There it is. And we see that road buckle, right, based on our thermal expansion. So the road themselves, even though they're supposed to be laid evenly, they're still going to be slight deficiencies depending on which part of the road it is, right? Some imperfections. And given time, as that road expands and contracts and expands and contracts and expands and contracts as it heats and cools, it's going to eventually crack, right? And when we get extremely high temperatures, we see these roads buckle because they expand into each other and snap upward, right? That's what causes that buckle is the excessive amount of heat causing the road to push against itself so it pops up. Now we can calculate the linear coefficient or, or the linear thermal expansion using this formula here. So delta L is going to be our change in length. Alpha, that, that little fish looking symbol, that, that A as well, that is the alpha. That is the coefficient of linear expansion. L sub I is our initial length, and delta T is our change in temperature. Now, nice thing about change in temperature, if you're working in Kelvin or Celsius, it doesn't matter which one, it's still going to work, right? Because a 50 degree change in Celsius is gonna be a 50 change on the Kelvin scale. So we're gonna see our average coefficient expansions to the right here. Those units are degrees Celsius to the negative first, which allows our units to match, right? So that alpha and, and delta T are gonna cancel each other out. So our change in length and our initial length are going to have the same unit. Now this doesn't matter if you use meters or centimeters or millimeters, as long as you are consistent with your length measurements, you're gonna be okay on this one. Same thing with your temperatures, right? If it's Kelvin, stick with Kelvin. If it's Celsius, stick with Celsius. That's going to kind of be the way to go. Now, what we would expect to see here is our change in lengths are going to be associated with the alpha, the initial length, and the change in temperature. If you're dealing with an aluminum bar and it undergoes a, a, a 10 degree change in its temperature, the initial length is going to influence how much that length changes. So, if you have a, a two meter bar versus a four meter bar, we're going to see a different amount of length change. The four meter bar will have its length change more, specifically twice as much, compared to the two meter bar. Same things works if we contract it, right? We're gonna expect a greater length contraction out of the four meter bar than the two meter bar. The coefficients themselves, 
the higher that value is, the more likely it is to change its, to change its length. So if alpha is higher, it is going to change its length more when it heats up, and it's going to contract and change its length more when it cools down. So high coefficient of expansion means it is going to change its length heating or cooling more than a material with a lower coefficient. For example, looking at the table, if you have the same length of an aluminum bar and of a copper bar, and you increase their temperatures the same amount, the aluminum is going to expand to a greater length. And if you take away heat, so cool them each down, the aluminum is going to shrink more as well. Here's a little bit of practice, a um, little bit of conceptual and two numerical ones. So read these questions, pause the video, and then come back for the explanations. Okay, welcome back. So we look at why do roads sometimes buckle and why do the roads seem rougher in the winter? Again, this is that expansion contraction piece. They buckle because as they expand into each other, at some point, something's got to give it, has no room to expand, so it buckles upward. And roads are going to seem rougher in the winter because as it cools, that road contracts, which is going to open gaps. As water gets into those gaps and then freezes, water, one of the rare substances that does this, expands as it cools. So not only has the roads shrunk to allow gaps, but now it's filled with water, which has expanded, causing it to crack and make potholes, thus making it seem rougher in the winter. If you're engineering a new railway, what's one thing you need to factor in? Um, well, it depends where you're at. I mean, how, you know, are you building this in Minnesota where your temperatures can range from negative 20 to 100 degrees? Or are you building this in Florida where your temperature range isn't going to be as large? So that plays a factor. And then what materials are you going to use as well? You know, are you going to use aluminum, steel? You know, what, what metal are you going to use? Because each of them is going to expand and contract slightly different. So you need to know how much expansion and how much contraction you would expect. Looking at these two example problems here, so the 35W bridge being 371 meters long, if you want complete expansion and contraction so the bridge is going to function, how long must the combined expansion joints be if the temperatures go from 42 degrees Celsius to negative 41 degrees Celsius? And there's the coefficient of expansion of concrete, 12 times 10 to the negative sixth. Here's how we would go about this. We're given the initial length, 371 meters. We're given our change in temperature, which is 83 degrees Celsius. We're given our coefficient of linear expansion. So all of those expansion joints are going to have to have a combined length of 0 0.370 meters or about 14 and a half inches. That means that that bridge is going to change length during the course of the year by over a foot. Right, 14.5 inches is going to be the overall length that that bridge is going to change by. So it's going to shrink by that much. It's going to expand by that much, which is substantial and really does need to be accounted for because if you don't account for that expansion and contraction, that bridge is going to buckle in spots or you're going to have big gaps in that bridge, which is going to make that bridge really hard to drive over. Now, moving on to the Golden Gate Bridge, right, we have our initial length. We have a 25 degree Celsius day and then our January day, which is negative 14. So we're going to get our temperature change there. And then we have our coefficient of expansion for steel. So we have our, our, our length, we have our temperature change and our coefficient. Plugging that into the formula to get our length change, right? We can then see that our change in length is going to be 1.17 meters, which is going to be almost four feet in length. So by putting this bridge in Minnesota on that cold of a day, it is going to be about a meter shorter in length, which is very, very, very substantial. You're talking almost four feet based on the calculations. So that's, you know, on, on me, for example, that's probably about up to my armpit in length. That is much greater than the width of a wheel. So if you're driving and that bridge is short a meter, you're running into some troubles. <laughs> I mean, that, that would not be fun to drive over. So there are a couple of practice problems, right? Numerical and conceptual. Um, there will be two other videos with the video lesson that are going to be demos that you need to watch to get a visual representation of what's happening here. So watch those other two demos and you'll be good to go. Thanks guys.